Hi, this is Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and a math advisor for Texas Instruments. And this short video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series. We're going to take a look at the mean value theorem for integrals. It's an important theorem that actually came into play on the first question on the 2019 exams for both AB and BC calculus. To get started, let's review what the average value of a function is. So the mean or average value m of a function f over the interval a to b is given by m equal to the definite integral value from a to b of f of x dx over or divided by the interval length b minus a. Another way to think of that is that this mean value times the length of the interval is equal to the definite integral of a constant function over that interval will be exactly the same as the original definite integral. Okay, let's take a look at an illustration of the mean value theorem for integrals. So we have a special document titled MVT for integrals that's going to show us the graph of a function f of x along with two movable limits of integration a and b. There's going to be a rectangle that will illustrate the value for the average value of the function. And we'll be looking for a point C between A and B such that the function value there times the length of the interval B minus A will give us that definite integral value. In other words, the function takes on its average value at at least one point. So let's take a look at this special document. It shows the graph of a function y equals f of x graphed in red. And we also have two movable limits of integration, a and b. The values of these two limits of integration are a equals 2 and b equals 4. We also have the value of the definite integral of f of x dx from 2 to 4 is shown here as 1.33. In the upper right is shown the area of a rectangle that's exactly equal to that definite integral value. Now this rectangle shown in blue, sits on top of the interval from a to b. That means its width is the length of the interval, b minus a. Its height has to be the average value. And we can see that the graph crosses at a point, and that's the point c that satisfies the mean value theorem for integrals. I'm going to move the point a to the left a bit. Let's move it over to a equals 1. We have a new definite integral value of 2.11. The length of our interval now is 3, so the height of the rectangle is that 2.11 divided by 3. That gives us our average value, and notice now we've got a couple of points that satisfy that value. You're guaranteed at least one point, but you might have multiple points. Now I'm going to move the value b to the right, and I'm moving it so far that we're seeing some negative contributions where the graphs dip below the x-axis. So now I have a definite integral value that's negative. It's this negative 2.22. That's over the interval from 1 to 8. Now notice the area of the rectangle is still positive, but we flip the orientation so that the other side of the rectangle corresponds to a negative y constant. And we still have a value c here between a and b where the function takes on that average negative value. Now let's take a look at a more familiar function, f of x equals x squared plus 1 shown here, and this is still the same setup for illustrating the mean value theorem. The values of a and b are negative 2 and 1 respectively, and that's giving us a definite integral value of 6. Since the length of the interval is 3, the average value would be 6 divided by 3, or 2. And notice here's a point, a, uh, x equal negative 1, as well as x equal positive 1, where the function value is exactly equal to 2. I'll move b over to 0. We've got a new definite integral value. It's actually 4 and 2 thirds. The length of our interval is 2, so our average value is going to be 2 and 1 third. And we see there is indeed a point where the function value takes on exactly that average value. I'm going to move b all the way over to positive 2. That will give us a length of interval from a negative 2 to 2 of 4. And now I can see there are a couple of points that satisfy the conclusion of the mean value theorem. 
An important necessary condition for the mean value theorem to hold is that our functions must be continuous. Let's take a look at what happens if we have a function that's not continuous. Here I've got a step function. It takes on only integer values. This is actually the greatest integer function. Now this function is very easy to integrate. Let's illustrate. I'm going to drag b over to 0 and we can see the definite integral here will be exactly negative 1. We're just needing to calculate the area of a square and then orient it accordingly since it's under the axis. Let me drag b all the way over to b equals 3. Now I've got a negative contribution over here and then I've got basically three squares stacked up in a staircase that I'll need to account for. So 3 minus 1, we've got a total of 2 for my definite integral value. The length of my interval from negative 1 to 3 is 4. So 2 divided by 4 will give me my average value of 1 half. The problem is my function only takes on integer values, so there is no point whatsoever at which my function value is equal to 1 half. That illustrates why that necessary condition of continuity is so important. Well, that winds up this video. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.